Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So it's been a tumultuous day, I'm not going to lie. Um, XRP price, as of the time of this recording, uh, trading right now at about 37 cents, 38 cents almost. And, uh, you know, a lot of people wondering, how do I react to this? Is this the end? Should I have been listening to the blockchain backer and other technical analysts in the crypto space, hoping for that altcoin season? Well, guys, we haven't seen it. And in this morning's video, I talked a little bit about utility, how that could be the Phoenix Rising. We talked a little bit about Luna and the UST coin and that whole debacle, just kind of elaborating on yesterday's video. And now how Tether is also beginning to lose its peg and how this could be the beginning of the end of the crypto market as we know it. Guys, if you didn't catch this morning's video, I'll link it up here in the top right hand corner. Um, but not to fear, because you know what you hold, the fundamentals of crypto have not changed. And um, I mean, this is what Brad Garlinghouse has been saying since day one. 99% of cryptocurrencies are going to fall to zero. And, uh, you know, at that time we were thinking to ourselves, well, how? How are they going to go to zero if people still keep pumping money into these crap coins? Well, maybe this is it. Um, but guys, here's the thing. The fundamentals, like I said, have not changed. And companies that are Ripple enabled are just getting bigger, like Temenos. Ripple enabled since 2016, and now a private equity firm is eyeing up Temenos. So private equity firm EQT and Toma Bravo are reportedly exploring potential bids for Swiss core banking outfit Temenos. According to Bloomberg, the buyout firms are in the early stages of considering offers for Temenos, which has a market value of about $8 billion. Group revenue at Temenos rose 9% year on year to $231.6 million in the third quarter on a constant currency basis. Earnings before interest taxes, depreciation, and amortization were up 6% to $108.3 million. Results show for that period. Uh, so Temenos, a Ripple-enabled company, and EQT and Toma Bravo are looking to purchase it. Temenos also recently announced that it has exceeded the 70 Neobank customer milestone uh, more than any other provider and is now developing a range of new tools specifically designed to cater to this fast-growing segment. So Temenos here, guys, a big partner for Ripple, uh, especially in the early days, they are the uh, back-end IT provider to integrate all the banks and upgrade their software. Uh, again, like I said, Temenos has been Ripple enabled since 2016, and now we're starting to see bigger firms, bigger companies eyeing Temenos, eyeing the big guy and saying, hey, maybe we should make a bid for that company and grow them even further or even bring them under the umbrella of what uh, maybe some of the other uh, banking companies that these private equity firms own. So an interesting move there. Uh, it hasn't happened happened yet, but I will be keeping my eye on it. This from Kenwood Capital here on Twitter. Could the SEC case against Ripple falter over a conflict of interest? So this was the latest news. I didn't really talk about this yesterday because there was so much going on in the market with the Terra Luna stuff, but you know, there are developments being made in the Ripple SEC lawsuit. Newly discovered documents suggested a possible conflict of interest from a former SEC official when he made a speech about Ether. This is talking about William Hinman. In a Wednesday announcement, guys, which just happened yesterday, corruption watchdog Empower Oversight claimed that documents obtained under a Freedom of Information request suggested former SEC Director of Corporate Finance, William Hinman, had a conflict of interest. So Empower Oversight is blowing the whistle. Uh, this goes on to say he should not have made the speech in 2018, in which he stated that Ethereum and its transactions are not securities. So uh, this was brought to my attention yesterday by somebody on Twitter, and I'm sorry, I forget who you were, and I was going to talk about this yesterday, but I uh, kind of got sidetracked with everything else that was going on. Uh, to sum up, though, John Deaton posted this. Call to action. The following text has been entered into the app at Crypto Law US. An independent government watchdog in power oversight has obtained evidence of a potentially serious breakdown in ethics control at the SEC. He continues, highlighting some of the important points here. The violations in regards to the regulation of cryptocurrencies and possible financial conflicts of interest involving former Director of Corporate Finance William Hinman on May 9th, 2022, uh, Empower Oversight sent a referral of this evidence to the Office of the Inspector General at the SEC. It requested a comprehensive review of Hinman's failures to disclose his conflicts of interest related to the market moving 2018 speech on crypto regulation and repeatedly ignored clear incentives to not meet with certain entities with which he had a direct financial interest. So the Empower Oversight Committee uh, calling him on it and uh, bringing this to the SEC's attention. Uh, I guess we have not heard a response yet from the SEC. John Dean goes on by saying, I'm asking that you all please write and ask the Banking Committee to demand that the SEC Office of the Inspector General proceed immediately with a comprehensive investigation as requested by Empower Oversight. 
The IG is to provide a report to Congress on its findings for further actions and promptly refer any evidence of criminal violations to the U.S. Department of Justice. And so Tensa Gizla down here saying, might as well add the U.S. YouTubers. Spread the word, guys. Tag me in this. So, uh, yeah, I should have talked about this yesterday. Didn't get around to it. William Hinman, though, now under the spotlight by the Empower Oversight Committee. So could a settlement be imminent? This coming from Stefan Hubert. And just hear me out on some of these points, okay? Settlement imminent. I mean, seriously. They're setting up the narrative now. Gensler will blame everything on the Trump administration, act like he will investigate the thing, coming up with new rules for his new enforcement stuff, and looking like the real deal. Uh, just posting, you know, a screen grab from that article that I just read. And some down here, uh, finding him on this uh, theory, finding him on this hypothesis, Ripple would be stupid to settle in these market conditions, says Amudu Sai. But Stefan Hubert says, absolutely not. How could you think this? It would be absolutely mind-blowing. It would look like the only safe investment in crypto. And I was mentioning this in this morning's video. The fact that, you know, if we did actually see a settlement in these market conditions, okay, we got to remember the market didn't look like this a week ago or two weeks ago. We were still holding support up and around 60 cents. Uh, since then, you know, the entire market has collapsed. XRP trading right now at 37 cents. Uh, there's the whole Terra Luna debacle that has gotten newbie investors really shaken. And so to Stefan Hubert's point, um, you know, a, a settlement could actually be a good thing at this moment in time. Think, if Ripple settles and there's clarity, XRP would then be the only cryptocurrency with clarity in the market. And all the scared money guys, all the scared money would flock to a coin, in my opinion at least, Capital would flock to a coin that has the regulatory clarity to safeguard their investment, especially if they are now down 80, 90% maybe on some of their other investments. Think about that. So whereas before we were saying settlement, uh-uh, Ripple should fight this out in court. We know what we hold. We have been wrong-footed by the SEC and that whole narrative. But these markets move very fast uh, and the narrative moves very fast and the sentiment moves very fast. Fast forward to today, and I can see how a settlement would make sense. Uh, X Boutier here saying, you know, this is why Gensler has been so silent about the Ripple case since his first day. His first words about the case will make him look like a hero of the people, and the case delays. All coordinated like chess pieces. Uh, XRP future of money, $100, saying totally agree, 100%. Great time to settle with the crypto crash too. Less focus on the corruption for the SEC, and more on the crypto market recovery. SEC can take some credit for the recovery, and instead look at Luna and stablecoin. So that's the other thing. Uh, it could be a bit of a distraction considering there is now a big red flashing beacon over here, uh, namely stablecoins, that the SEC should probably be focusing on rather than dragging a company that uh, has been doing everything by the book through court. It's kind of a win-win scenario for everybody if you think about it. Uh, so an interesting point here from Stefan Hubert. Also, Wanted to mention this, guys, from Kevin.XRP, an alternative theory to the XRP lawsuit. Hear me out here. He says, most people believe XRP lawsuit is going well into 2023, with delays at every turn and summary judgment not set to be filed by November and fully briefed before Christmas. Others, including myself, believe the ISO 20022 standard will go live in November. So let's not forget the ISO 20022 standard supposed to go live this November 2022. We also know RippleNet will play a key role in utilizing the XRPL in ODL, Liquidity Hub, and CBDCs. In my opinion, global institutions will not use this new system without full regulatory clarity, and I agree completely. Which means either the lawsuit needs to be over by November, the system needs to be delayed, or... ISO 20022 goes live on time, but without XRP. This scenario makes settlement in November or before November a high probability. So uh, just going to that point of settlement, right? To that point of Stefan Hubert saying, this would be a great time to settle. It would be a win-win for everybody. It would be a win-win for the SEC, for XRP holders. And not only that, for the greater financial system, if they do need the regulatory clarity uh, for the ISO 20022 standard to go live uh, utilizing XRP. So he continues by asking, but why the delays? Do the delays from the SEC make sense to any of you? What are they waiting for? Ripple has money, they can afford to see this out. So no, there is clearly something else going on behind the scenes. 
Enter the Biden executive order on March 8th. Biden gave 180 days for government agencies to collaborate and give a full report on crypto. That report is due the 4th of September, I believe. So are the delays to allow Biden time to regulate the cryptocurrency industry? With summary judgment motions due, ISO 2022 due, and the timing of Biden's order all falling into place, it's hard to imagine a 2023 end to this case. Personally, I think a new regulatory agency will be born this year to regulate digital assets. All tokens will need to register, and most including meme slash rug pull coins will be regulated out of existence. So going back to that whole idea that, you know, 99% of cryptocurrencies are not going to exist once we get a regulatory framework. They're just going to go poof, up in smoke, and the coins that solve problems are going to be the coins that we have left. XRP and the whole market will be given clarity and the lawsuit will be over without Judge Torres having to rule on anything significant. That's just my honest personal opinion all, not legal advice or financial advice, but a very good perspective here from Kev.XRP. So we've got the Biden executive order, okay, due sometime in September, he's estimating. Uh, ISO 20022 happening in November. The uh, full implementation is supposed to happen in November. We also had that video, that prediction uh, that I talked about in yesterday's video. I'll link that video up here in the top right-hand corner. Marin predicting in January of 2021, the downturn in May of 2021, and then the upturn in July of 2021. Not only that, she retweeted that tweet out just the other day with a tweet that she posted in January of 2022, predicting that March the 10th was going to be the downfall of the crypto market or, you know, somewhere in and along those lines. And when was March 10th? Well, guys, that was just a couple of days ago, right over here uh, on the XRP chart. We actually had a bullish day, but sure enough, smack dab in the middle of this downtrend. So an interesting perspective and kind of spooky how accurate she was in this prediction. Like I said, I linked that video up in the top right hand corner for those of you guys interested in watching. Um, so I guess I should also say that uh, not only did she predict that, she is also suggesting that by quarter four of 2022, we are going to see an uptrend again for the crypto market. And she's not the only one. Uh, the CEO of PolySign, Jack McDonald, he was also suggesting that the latter half of 2022 is going to see another crypto uptick. So it all makes sense, right? With ISO 20022, the SEC lawsuit hopefully coming to an end, summary judgment uh, supposed to happen somewhere in November. Jeff at ISO underscore XRP here posting this. Anyone else getting the feeling that the Fed and the SEC and other three letter agencies are working together to suppress the markets until they are able to catch up with their Fed now payments, trying to stay relevant? Would that even be legal? And so he retweeted out this from Fed Payments Improvements. The FedNow team had a blast at Payments 2022. Thank you all to the service providers who demonstrated their solutions for the FedNow service at our booth. Check out the service providers showcase here. So FedNow, the US's solution for fast real-time payments, by the way, also Ripple enabled through Valente, well, maybe they need time to get up to speed. So then the question remains, is this all coordinated? Are they trying to buy time and kind of coordinate everything for that moment in quarter three or quarter four of 2022, when ISO 2022 is supposed to come online? Of course, we've got the Biden executive order, the Ripple XRP lawsuit, and will we finally get that clarity, guys, to move back to the upside? That's just my opinion, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.